My name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. Today, we're going to be talking about a divorce. Well, not a divorced woman, but a married woman talking about divorced women. It is just a whole mess. Let's go ahead and get this started. DJ, don't forget to like, subscribe. Y'all know what to do. Younger women started to listen to older women with more experience about not even bothering with men. Men know that that is the greatest threat to the extinction of their preferred lifestyle, to men's privilege, to men's existence. And that's why they hate us. I want to start right there, though. <clears throat> Listen, I understand. And I'm not trying to make it always the man against woman thing. But this concept that women threaten men's existence is just not true. Older women can talk about men however they want to. But I just I always find it funny when some women come on and say, and, and, and men are so threatened, they feel like their privilege would be, t if we wanted it, we'd take it. You know what I'm saying? If we didn't want women to have things, they wouldn't. That's just how it is. And I'm not trying to be mean, but I say the same thing about, you know, other things in life. You know, if somebody didn't want you to have something, they'd just take it. Let's not get it confused, right? Men, we, we you see what men do to each other. We fight, we go to war. We drop bombs. We're, we're savage sometimes. If men wanted, uh, like, privilege or men didn't, if men didn't accept or try to be better or meaning that women who say that men <clears throat> are afraid of things being taken from us, men could just outright choose not to date certain women then. If they absolutely had no choice, they'd be like, oh, well, forget it then. You know, it is what it is. And society would have to make adjustments. Us men, I feel like men really are trying to do stuff. And the more we try to do stuff, I think the more we get screwed. Because when we try to become more emotional, when we try to become more vulnerable, when we try to listen to women, what happened? The script got flipped on us. Now we get told that we're, we're weak. We don't approach women. Oh, we're too emotional. Men cry too much. Um, they call us all types of things now. The more emotional we got and the more feminine we got, the more they started to hate us now. Now they say we're not real men. Now they, now you have rappers and uh, hip hop people saying that we need to have big dick energy. And now they want the opposite now. They, now they want to go back to men who are rough and, uh, I'm not saying this weird, but rough and tough. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, there's no winning. So I think in the, at the end of the day, it would just been better if men had just uh, made very minuscule um, differences and just kept moving like we were before. I just don't understand why women feel like, and this is why I hate about the red pill too. Uh, is when they do this kind of stuff, the whole um, <clears throat> we don't need the women, really. Um, I think we need each other. So I hate both sides who do this stuff. But for the sake of this video, we're going to attack the women's thinking on this. Let's go ahead. One of the reasons why I've had such an amazing life is because my mom raised me when she was a bitter, divorced woman. I'm not even exaggerating. I can tell. Look how you got on camera. She talked so much crap about men, like, like without even saying it, like under her breath remarks, so she'd be like, yeah, if they ever pay for it, you know, or like, don't count on them to blah, blah, blah. You know, like, if they ever pay for it, see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? She's, uh, he sounded like her mother was already mad talking about like if men, if they ever paid for it, saying that men don't pay for things or we're just uh, trying to skate free. You wanted us to be equal to you. You said that we wanted, you wanted men to be closer to you women. And the second we did that and start going, OK, well, maybe I don't have to work 80 hours a week and make as much money as possible. Maybe I'll work 40 and now we don't have enough money. You know what I'm saying? When we decided, OK, let's spend more time with the family. Um, let's try to be there every day. Money has to go down for that to happen. And then you immediately start going, well, my husband can't pay for this. He can't pay for that. Do you want me to work 80 hours a week? Because listen, men. <laughs> I know some men are lazy because there's people, there's human beings that are lazy, but there's a lot of men who are fine with working an 80 hour week. I personally used to put in a 60 hour week while still doing this YouTube stuff, which is next to 15 hours for me, right? Because I have to do this every day. Then I have to do all the uh, editing and stuff in the research, right? I'm fine with putting in a 75, 80 hour week. That's cool with me to me, because be honest with you, <clears throat> this is different for me personally, but I know it's different for every man. Me, if I am not doing something productive often, I get worse. Like my discipline starts to fail me if I don't have that every day. I need structure. That's why I like having a nine to five. 
if I can go to work and then do the YouTube thing and then work out and just have my day be stacked like that to where I only have like an hour or two to watch something and go to bed, that works for me. But if I have like all day, like say, you know, you get that Sunday off and you have all day to do what you want. I, if I have that every single day, that's when I notice I gain weight. That's when I notice some of my disciplines start to fail me. That's when I notice my mind starts to want to go look at stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And that's when I notice my mind starts to slip. Some men need that. They need to have their mind productive all day. Even if that means sometimes you can't sit on the couch with your wife every single night. You can do it on a Friday. You can maybe do it on a Sunday. But I'm just saying, like, but you can't have it both ways. You can't tell us to be give you more attention and make less money and then get mad at us for not making enough money. Well, there has to be some sacrifice. It wasn't even like a lot of the, some of the, my favorite content creators on here are divorced women. Those women are going to tell you the truth more than anyone. And that's why like, if I had any advice to give. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think divorced women and divorced men will probably tell you more truth about being married than somebody who's married trying to keep it together. They, because somebody who's divorced is going to tell you the problems. Somebody who's married doesn't want to tell you the problem because they're in the midst of it. I agree with that. My only problem with that is that when a divorced person is telling you it's okay to get divorced, if a divorced person is telling you some of the problems that come up, is something to look for, that's fine. Giving advice. But they also need to be like, hey, but at the end of the day, you need to try your best to keep it together. Try your best to stay married. I'm fine with that. I don't, I'm fine with divorced people being like, hey, look, I screwed up. Um, we were doing this and this ended up tearing us apart. And there was this, this going on, that going on. But here's what you could do to prevent this. Not somebody who's divorced and bitter because they're not somebody you want to listen to. Because you don't want to listen to somebody who's bitter. Because somebody who's bitter will only tell you the bad things. And anytime something's going right, they're going to be skeptical as she's going to mention later, she's going to always be cynical, which is not something you want from somebody. I don't want to listen to somebody who's bitter because they lost their business um, because they're going to blame everybody but themselves. I need somebody who's going to say, yeah, I had a business. I screwed it up. I ended up going bankrupt because I wasn't paying attention to the details. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with listening to somebody who went bankrupt, but somebody who's bitter and bankrupt, that's a problem. Younger women, especially in their 20s, you know, teen, like late teens, 20, even into like your early 30s, depending on, you know, what your goals are and what you want in life or whatever. But even still, don't believe men. Assume the worst in all of them until proven otherwise. I see. See, that's what I'm saying. Don't believe men and assume the worst of all of them until proven otherwise. That's a terrible way to go into a relationship. That's a terrible way to go into a relationship. I don't understand how these women complain about the red pill guys and then say the exact same thing. Go in there assuming the worst. Why would you do that? Because if you go in there assuming the worst, the second a man slips or anything, he shows you one red flag that he's still working on because you can't expect everybody to be perfect when you go into a relationship, especially if you marry them. There's going to be some red flags. Hell, I have red flags um, that um, that I had to deal with in my marriage that I didn't know until I was in my, I was married. Right. So I'm glad my wife didn't go in and assuming the worst. Um, now, sometimes my wife had problems because she had never seen a married couple in her life, right? Because my parents were married and hers weren't. So sometimes she saw the dark side of, um, of marriage, right? You know, getting with a guy, leaving a guy, getting with a guy. She saw that from both her parents. So she never saw a stable relationship. So there's some things she went in with a, a bad mindset. Same for me. Because I've always seen my parents married, some things I just went in assuming would work immediately. And I didn't know that they don't work like that because my parents don't tell me everything, obviously. Um, so there's some things I assume that was wrong. Guys, don't give them the benefit of the doubt and listen to divorced women. Are some divorced women pissed and hate men and, and never want to mess around with them ever again? Absolutely. Some of them will are in the phase of that and may never leave, which I totally respect because they actually understand just how high the stakes are to marry a man. In this current system of patriarchy, be a wife. As soon as I hear the word patriarchy, I'm like, oh. To a man, it's over. man is risking like your life being ruined. Totally ruined. And they understand that. So they're not messing around. They're not like, like, oh my God, are you going to get married? Right? Like they. All right. So pretty much she just goes on about that. And then she goes on to talk about how her um, married friends, uh, she, some of the women she has that are happily married, 
um, even understand this concept. So just to go back a second. Hold on. In this current system of patriarchy, be a wife to a man is risking like your life being ruined. Being married to anybody is a risk of your life being ruined. All right, get the camera back on me. So pretty much what I've gotten out of this woman, this individual is just that, you know, she's caught up in the whole. Be pessimistic the whole time into a relationship. Um, the more I watch these videos, guys, the more I start to laugh about them, because the more I'm like, these people just don't understand it. Like they're just in their own little world. And I think you I have to address them. Um, you, we have to address them. Um, I try to come at it as much logical sense as I can, but I'm sure. You know, even I make videos that people are like, oh, my gosh. You know, I get it. So I'm not getting on this woman. I don't care for this woman. Um, nothing personal towards her. I just think about the mindset that we should never go into a marriage. Man, my mic looks bright as heck. We'll fix that later. Um, but I think that we should just start thinking to ourselves, hey, look, if I go into this marriage, I might get screwed. Um, but I know this is sounds stupid to say, too, but I try to check myself, too. I could be like. I could go in this marriage and my wife get screwed. I'm not sitting here saying I'm some perfect man. I don't go into my relationships selfish. I go in there thinking I could, if I don't, if I don't keep on top of my stuff, if I don't keep um, making sure I'm staying, talking to my mentors in my life, making sure I'm keeping my head straight, I could absolutely screw my wife over. I could get caught up. I could go, I'm not a gambler or anything, but you never know what you could fall into. I could spend all our money, get us kicked out, evicted, and it'd be all over for us. If I just play my cards wrong and if I just act stupid about everything. Um, so it's just a chance that I could also screw her over. So I need to be the best man I can be. And that doesn't always pan out because we're all guessing at the end of the day um, to the best of our knowledge. But the same thing, you know, so I don't understand why people have to go in thinking that they're the perfect one in the relationship. If you go in thinking that this man can ruin my relationship, I mean, ruin my life. That means you thinking that you're the perfect person going into this relationship, that there's nothing you can do wrong. You're going in immediately thinking that you're the prize. You're the person. You're the one keeping it all together. So if it falls apart, it's always going to be on them. And that is a disaster for a divorce coming up. That's a, I mean, and I want to say this, there's no way to know who's going to get divorced. Okay. I understand everybody wants to throw her out. 50% of marriages fail. I mean, that's been a number for years, decades. I mean, it's, it's, I've been taught that since I was a kid. There's just no way to know, man, because society is going to um, have some transformation on your mind. If you get too much into social media, when you get married, it's not like you get married and you don't fall into anything. People fall into addictions. People fall on hard times. People go bankrupt. People lose children. People lose um, all types of people. And not everybody can handle those things. So people make mistakes and they get divorced. I think when we see somebody get divorced, we assume they always get a divorce and it was for the right reason. Some people get a divorce and it was a mistake. They got a divorce for a dumb reason, but that number still goes into the statistic. It doesn't matter what the divorce was. It still goes down into the statistic. So some people who just like, I just got divorced because I was stupid. Doesn't matter. It goes down as 50% of divorces. I mean, so my thing is just, let's not always look at that divorce number and just work on our relationships individually. We can maybe look at see what maybe causes it. But even if you think, oh, it's because of financial reasons. If I know going into a relationship in my marriage, that financial is one of the reasons divorces happen. I don't see how that helps me. Because if I go in that way, I already start thinking to myself, uh oh, if I lose my job, the divorce is coming. And so I'll start acting it out. I'll start making it a self-fulfilling pro prophecy. If I lose my job, I'll be like, I'm going to start acting different towards my wife because I'm afraid she's going to leave. And then the inevitable happens. She leaves because of the way I'm acting. Right. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you have nothing to think, just like the video. And if you don't want to do that, dislike the video. I don't care what you do. Just do what you're going to do. Okay. At the end of the day, baby, you do you. All right. Much love to all y'all. I'm gone.